Welcome to Enlightened Masculinity. I'm Yogi Chris, Chris DeVilbus, aka Pimpin Yogi, PhD, founder of Nathalem Yoga and director of operations here at Base One Stoic Temple, San Jose, California, where I live with the world's number one relationship expert. So this guy, ACD, you know, he was saying something and I realized it and I've realized it uh, several times, but it's like circled back around to it. So I'm seeing it again. And that's just how this thing happens as you uh, are on this evolution. It's very, man, this is very interesting and it's paradoxical. You know what that means? That means like, it's like frustratingly complicated. It's like, it, it, you can't move forward because there's something contradicting, but it's not contradicting. That's the paradox of it. It's like, what do you mean, dude? It's like, it's like, uh, not yet advanced enough or something, but here, here it is. That I was thinking of it in meditation. It was coming to me as a chess game, this analogy. So the chess game of life, a lot of people are playing the chess game of life and they're not aware that they're playing a game. That's all they've done from birth or first memory or whatever is play this game of chess. And they get all emotional about it. They get upset when they lose. They get all victorious when they win. and uh, they call cheating when they're looking away or something or all kinds of shit happens, but they never realize that they can. It's, it's not just that they can stop playing. It's like that they are playing. Like they might even get so upset that they stop playing, but they don't leave the, it doesn't leave their mind. Like they still want to play like, but they don't see what's happening. They don't see the other person has the, uh, Let's see, I don't know. The analogy might fall, fall apart at this point. But yeah, I don't want to go too deep uh, into the analogy. But the idea of what, I, what was coming to me in the meditation was that there's this attachment to how we do things, which has so much to do with how we were shown to do things, which was just visible to us in our upbringing. And like, so it just became, that became what we were expecting. So we unconsciously expect all, everything that we saw. And we are stuck to that identity as if it were a windshield. You know, like the, if, you know, Daniel Roque is driving right now. And so there's a windshield in front of him and it's probably clear. You can see through it. And that's kind of like our eyes are to our brain a little bit. But going further, more metaphysically, that's how our identity, our identity is to our mind. It's a windshield that we forget. We're inside driving. We're just looking out and we keep, and we're looking and we're, and it's stuck so close to our attention that uh, there's no separation. It is, we are it, but it goes through all these um, fluctuations or whatever. And basically what I'm saying, because I was started off with like the paradox idea was that just because you see the game as a game doesn't mean that you win it. You don't necessarily even get better at the game. You almost get worse at the game because you stop playing it. You start observing it. Make sense? So this is what the paradox I'm coming to because. So what was said in lecture it, uh, that reminded me of something and it's something I've circled back around to is that. Um, there are things that you may be saying, let's say, let's say you're talking to a girl and you're in a comfortable, casual conversation and she might even be your girl. So you don't even have like the sex agenda of like trying to get laid. You're just, you're going to hang out. You're going to the coffee or whatever. You're just talking, you know, it's your once a week, twice a week hangout. And so you're just, you're just talking and, and you get going on to something and you say something and in that, she reacts to something, something you said. You see her turn to you. You see her eyes dilate. You see her, you feel her get affectionate with you or the other direction. You even say, you're just in your flow, but you don't realize something you say shuts her down, closes her off, turns her away, frowny face, whatever. And yes, that's unique to the individual. What the fuck bothers her? What, what is attractive to her? But enough experience and wisdom and 
every man likes to say he has so much experience, so much wisdom. Just so you know, just so you know, every guy, I was at the grocery store and this lady was like, this grocery store is more expensive than other ones. I almost told her, don't you know that everybody says that about their grocery store? Have you ever noticed that everyone in their grocery, everybody's grocery store is a little bit more, but they like it because of this? Like, the fuck? How can every grocery store be a little bit more? It doesn't work out mathematically, right? unless there's the one, I don't know, there's the lowest one that everyone's comparing to. Probably. Everybody's comparing to some. So, this paradox. Oh, so you see these reactions and you as a man, unconsciously, you're just patterning things and you have this agenda, meaning you're, you are trying to succeed at the mating agenda, whether you want to or not. No matter how much you convince yourself, that's like what you're doing. That's like one of the, it's like gravity. You just got to accept it as the truth. Like what you're doing in life is trying to fulfill your mating agenda. And that doesn't mean you don't have passion about other things and, and love, inf- like even more pure love because that romantic love is so wavering. Turn, oh man. If it's like one of those flavors of love. Love has like 57 flavors. And, you know, one of them is romantic love. There's like these other loves. You have the love of wisdom, philosophy. You could have, uh, you know, love of music or something art of thinking. So I'm just recatching my train of thought, which is the paradox idea. Uh, observing, observing the game. Yes. So this paradox, like, so you get red pilled and you start to see which there's so much to the red pill, because like I said, I'm circling back around to this realization, which I still haven't really I've barely uncovered it and it's going to hit. It's going to be like a fucking boulder fell off the cliff into the bay and it's going to create this 600 foot wave. All right. This is a big, this is a big one, big Kahana. And, uh, but we got to, I got to build up to it because I've never said it before. And you'll get this if you lecture or whatever, and you have like these ideas and you got to like work your words to it somehow. It's hard to like, just say the idea. Uh, so the word is called amorphic. It's so amorphic. It doesn't have shape. Um, it's a paradox. Checking out the game. Yeah. Yeah, because it's circling back. It's spiraling back to this realization because I've had the same realization before. And I have deeper knowledge now, deeper awareness. So the same realization is like, wow, how, did, how can I realize the same thing twice? I didn't forget it. It's just I'm realizing it like, we, so we got to use these words. Like if I say more deeply, what the fuck does that mean? Deep where? Deep in what? Oh, deep in my mind. What does that mean? What is the mind? Where is the depth? Measure this thing. How? Well, understanding the words, the logic of someone's life, their philosophy. This is the measurement. And of course, how they, how they, uh, um, how they live, I mean, uh, but I'm saying when I say the realization comes from a certain depth, the depth is an understanding. And understanding means what? Like we use this word understanding to stand under something. So you can trust that it's not going to fall on you because you understand it. It won't collapse on you. You can hold it up. It's definitely going to hold up under your standing. And so the depth of my understanding is almost like the, the weight of information that I can, that stands on my shoulders that I can hold because of the depth of the understanding. And so we like circle back around to this thing and it just shows, I'm telling you, like six years in this and the evolution of consciousness, your mind, your understandings and awareness, it, it keeps going. You're not going to get to this final destination. So the beingness, you're going for something right now. All right, so let's get to this. There are ways of talking which enliven the other person, which attract the other person, which brings pleasure to the other person. When they hear 
certain word combinations, phrase idea combinations. It's somewhat related to them as an individual, and it's somewhat related to the gene pool because you'll see commonalities. You can test it and you'll see patterns where it works on other people, other women, or sometimes not other women. The speed dating event was a really great example of this. Really, anytime you go, like the strip club is a really great example of this, except it's so fake in the strip club. So the speed dating event is also fake, but it's like less fake. It's like, because there's judge, there's, there's judgment. We're voting on each other. We're voting the best girl that we would want to like represent us at the White House or something. We're voting on the best guy that they're, they're voting on the best guy. So there's, you could still fake your way through it, but there's just a little bit more accountability, a little bit more feedback. And especially if you go party after party. So seeing this rotation of women and you're, studying this stuff and you're seeing the evolutionary psychology. And so, you know, conceptually that yes, uh, safety and security is like a priority for the woman, but like, how do you, wh where do you really see this come out in the conversation? Okay. So yes, body language. And are you intimidating? Are you in too much weight overbearing the tonality, the touch? Like, can you sense, is she contracting or is she opening? Is she feeling more comfortable and safe or is she feeling less comfortable and safe more danger more in fear you know with all little things you could be going well and you say the wrong thing and she closes in fear you it could be going real bad you're having a night with the girl and she it goes south for some reason you trigger something see if you don't know anything about the mind and someone says trigger something what the fuck you don't even know what that is like trigger what 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 is it like if you go into it and look like what is it what is a trigger in the mind how did it get there what is it what is it can it be changed? Can, is it something to be solved? Is it always there? Is it out of my control? Is it even a thing? Is it like ADD where we just say it and it became it? Like, or is it a, like, you know, there's a lens that people are walking and, and living with, a lens over their eyes, preventing presence with other people, genuine communication is not getting through. They're not really being heard, just what wants to be heard is being heard, it's being interpreted. What we're saying may not be getting heard, what we're really saying. What we're saying is probably not what we're verbally saying. There's some intention, emotion, implication, insinuation, there's some nonverbal suggestion. There's an agenda. And it's what you're saying verbally, the words, are probably not exactly your agenda. So there's some mind manipulation going on. You're trying to get the other person to do something by not saying it exactly. And you've learned that. And it's worked for you to the degree it's worked for you up until now. So part of snapping, stepping back from your identity, stepping out of it is seeing the patterns of, uh, you know, your, what you're creating for yourself over and over with how you communicate. When you step out of that, like, how do you step out of that? Definitely socializing, interacting with people who don't know, like, if you're in this tribe, if you're an IMC nation, you've been studying this stuff diligently. If you're reading, if you're on your process, then you're creating a matrix for yourself. It's in reality with the matrix of a bunch of other people. Like I see Milo, I see Lone Wolf, I see Tyler Powell, a bunch of people on. Jesus. Who knew Yogi Chris could attract 13 people to Zoom? Good job. Pat myself on the back. Miguel Omar, Scarhead, Prophet, Jaime, Valencia, base three in the house, and real fam Jake. I always like typing his name. When I message real fam, I'm like, what's up, real fam? It's a good name because when you say it, then you end up calling the other person real fam. So it creates like a bunch of bond. Like you bond with the person just by saying their name because, man, I don't get it. Um, you know, there'll be something that happens with the person where they, they react to something that you didn't mean to say something that you were just gesturing. 
or you'll see their eyes focus a little more. It, or something will happen with their eyes where it's like it, it comes to, like you just, you feel the attention in their eyes more, like when something you say gets through to them. When something you say is not predictable to them, they weren't expecting it. And they have to, you see they're almost like they're, mental gears like they pause a beat while they kind of connect these ideas it wasn't in the pattern they're used to i forget people are in oh man the patterns the other day for a wednesday open class for gathering i gave like 20 minutes of just like a, l- a little bit of history of like where i came from as far as relationships or whatever all the way back like 12 15 years or something and it's ridiculous like i was thinking in my mind as i was like going through it i was like man it's like it's not even enough to say it was a lifetime ago it's just so different I was in it. And when I see guys, it's just like, ah, they're hypnotized. They are in trance. And we are all somewhat in trance. We're in the trance of our life. And the process is creating, putting, um, yeah, creating, expanding awareness from where we're at as, as we do the process, you know. I read earlier for like, like an hour ago or something, I read for like 10 minutes, five, 10 minutes. And it's amazing. It was like medicine. It was like medicine for my mind. It, it made things make sense. It sharpened the edges. It gave me solidarity, something certain to lean on, these ideas. Because out in the world, as a man, it was an idea I just like had the other day. And it's one of those things that's been said to me, but I was like, it was like a deep realization. As a man, you're rejected left and right, left and right and left and right. The woman is accepted left and right and left and right. It's just totally different. You're overcoming a bunch of objections as a man to get anywhere. And it doesn't really end. So once you get somewhere and you, you achieve something, anybody who doesn't know you, you've got to win over their objections again. mind matrix people that's the the hypnosis is the mind matrix so when you see as azd hacks this code with multiple relationships so you see these attraction bubbles come up in the girl you see these affection bubbles these things these reaction maybe that's better instead of attraction reaction bubble this reaction bubble comes out of the girl i've seen it I've seen stuff that, I, you know, with my analytical, whatever scientific background mind, as I was watching his game in field, sitting in a lounge at a hotel or something, and I would see the girl react, the only words that I could use to, like, describe it, so that, you know, what brought it dra- down to earth from just an awestruck, like, whoa, like, to bring it from that down to, like, explain what you just saw. I just saw him flip her genetic switches. That would be the words I would use. I just saw her her be genetically manipulated by him by how he was talking to her she just something expressed differently in her through this interaction so when you see these like reaction reactions come out of the girl and it's not so obvious as put a million dollars in front of her or a super handsome supermodel guy or uh you know the lamborghini or whatever a puppy dog like it's not these obvious things it's Something in a story, it's something in how you say something. It's maybe a word you choose. It could be other things like your scent or your uh, some gesture or some fashion or something. But so you start to notice, and you as a man, because you have this agenda that you want to succeed at, you want to win this game of chess of life. You want to turn twelve pawns into seventeen queens, and you know live happily ever after. Then you will naturally start just like remembering those things that got good reactions and dropping those things that did not get good reactions. If you're, you know, not tripping or on drugs or something, or you're intelligent, you apply your intelligence to what you're doing, you'll drop the worst and and keep the best. To the degree of your awareness, you may not be aware of what you're doing. You may not be paying attention and you may be moving slow. You may be going one girl at a time with two years in between each girl. And so you're really slow to evolve compared to the girl that's just like attracting attention left and right. And so she's developing these things, these behaviors that, I mean, we all know this story. Um, 
or like AZD with multiple relationships in field all the time, in set all the time. And then like we get that experience or something like it at the speed dating party, rotate, rotate, rotate. Party after party and you talk in this way and you lean in this way and you act in this way and you see maybe a couple of girls repeatedly. So you see some sincerity. So you're getting like as close to a real experience as you would in the real experience. The real experience though, you really get invested in like those guys playing chess that forget they're playing chess and you may lose awareness. And so you stop recording patterns because you're so on the emotional roller coaster up. Scientists. But then AZD will come into lecture and give us some sound bites, give us some examples, describe the text, show us the text, give us the infield, you know, report back to us. So we get these images, these storylines, these statements or sound bites or game replies, you know, some situational replies. That's a good word, situational. We would have that in wrestling where you like, you know, or it sweeps single, like head shoved down or something, start. And then like 30 seconds start from that position, like the guy has an advantage or something. So it's like a situational, you know, it'd be like in chess, you like set up the board a certain way and you keep playing from that position. Like, you know, so situational game. So we get these situational handles for when the girl does this, when the girl does that, when your buddy does this, you get all these handles and, but you got to apply it. You go out in life and you apply these handles. It gives you a different response than you were used to. You weren't, you weren't expecting it. Your reaction to the response you get may invalidate your action if you're not expecting it. You act, that's called incongruence. Then you may get discouraged. <laughs> Or do you get encouraged? So it's like, there's a, there's all this feedback bouncing back and forth that's going on. And uh, so we're getting strategy, logic, you know, the words, the wording, the behavior of success in this, in this game, in this game that we're talking about, that this kind of success, uh, success. And we're hacking the code. We're getting the code hacks. We, we are the gamers that are getting the fucking cheat codes from the coder. Or not even from the coder, but from the, the top player who's, who's decoding all of these codes that may or may not have intentionally been put into the program. It's almost like we're playing against an artificial intelligence. It's us versus the female genetic agenda. And she's not really aware of what she's doing. She's just evolving with us to, out, to beat us. To beat us at the agenda so she gets what she wants because her agenda is not our agenda otherwise we would just cooperate hold hands and get to the success together because we would want exactly the same thing no she wants something different she wants full commitment exclusivity all my resources until i'm used up but she also wants all the thrills of being with an alpha man bad boy this and that this and that and it doesn't really go together so it ends up polarizing the guy so he goes one direction or the other he probably turns beta so she ends up leaving him or being dissatisfied with him and either gets another one or for whatever reason she doesn't and then she just lives dissatisfied with that guy forever and it's just a really toxic negative couple living out their life and whatever you know and then they vote what do unhappy people vote for you know so that's why we're bettering society with the show so let's see this phone is about to die uh let me plug it in <laughs> whoa you got any questions, comments, you could uh, raise hands so I can call on you. Rick, I was just giving a, Rick is on Clubhouse. We're on streaming on like three apps here. I was just giving a bunch of chess analogies. And shit. Better improve my vocabulary, PhD, in shit. I could probably talk better. <laughs> uh, I don't think I got to the main point. This realization, I guess that was kind of it. You know, these these uh, reactions, genetic reactions, noticing things that are not obvious, but they're in your stories, they're in how you talk, they're in the little things. The more you're interacting with girls, the more you see these things, especially girls like in a longer relationship, because at the beginning, everybody's fronting. For the first three months, everybody's fronting. Shit, for the first two years, you're still fronting. You just keep getting deeper and, and relaxing into each other, and then you notice these things. Um, but if you just go with one girl at a time, you go too deep into her pattern you end up just patterning towards each other, to each other. And it, you kind of lose the ocean of genetic uh, information that's available by going with multiple frames of reference. Now, if she did that, I mean, yeah, I guess she would probably get a picture of the male genetic like 
behavior. There's probably safer ways to do that though, because men are kind of dangerous and you know, they'll fuck with her, they'll fuck with each other if jealousy and whatever. But like men are aggressive. And you know, the, the danger to her is really bad because you know, she gets knocked up or whatever, if she gets an eighth marriage disease or whatever. Like that really compromises her mating potential a lot. So I mean, she could do what she wants, but I think she's got more to lose, a lot more to lose by going with multiple men than I do by going with multiple women. That's very low risk for me. But I don't know what kind of guy she's talking about. Maybe she's talking about low risk guys. I don't really know what that is, but. All right. So I guess we're about done. We've peaked out here at 15, 15 people on Zoom. Yes, I count. I'm also here when there's one or two people still doing my podcast, so it's not about you. Glad everybody decided to show up. It's Friday, y'all. We got gathering. Who's not signed up for gathering? Mirren's coming to the party. Miguel Omar, get out of here. Camilo, Arslan, I'm a... When Wolf got on it, Rick got on it, or he's going to get on it. TK, Daniel Roque, uh, what's up? Leo Patino's coming. He's coming from Phoenix. Maybe you could come up through Vegas. You guys could come, to, come up together. Uh, Profits coming. Valencia, real fam. Real fam. Got to make it. So is there anything I can talk about for you guys? Uh, I think that covered, you know, most, I don't know if I really got to the idea that I wanted to say. I, I built it up too. I said it was going to be like a cliff bomb. Um, it was really seeing like this, code that we're getting from AZD, from his wisdom and being with the multiple relationships, high value women and finding these questions and dialogues and beingnesses and, and little, little things, subtle things that are just simple by themselves. But it's when applied, like you see that they, it solicits a, like a genetic reaction or something, like this genetic response, a positive response in most, in a majority of women. And we hear that and then we go and act it out. And so we end up getting some responses that we may be unfamiliar with, powerful response. It may be also mixed in with our, uh, you know, what we're bringing to the table. So there's going to be some salt and pepper in there. It's kind of weird. It's like when you put, get the food out of the microwave and some of it's hot, some of it's cold. Kind of like when you get like some good game sound bites and whatever, but you still have the old beingness. And so it's like, ah, oh, it's kind of not well mixed or something. Um, but better and better we go. And as we put out our communication and it echoes in the world of man and woman, and we have some local environment and we go out and do it again and go out and do it again. The echo eventually comes back to us and then eventually some more. Pretty soon we're sitting in a fucking echo chamber almost. We're sitting in a sound chamber. We're sitting in a, in a environment of social interactions that are reflecting back to us later the social repercussions of our prior actions. And then we create this whole ecosystem for ourselves, hundreds, thousands maybe of interactions. Do we put out more good than bad? Do we put out good game versus not good game? Hungry game or good game? What is this going to culminate to, the cause effect, these multivariate you know, simulation model of, the, of your life? You have a thousand interactions. The, and then these are communication lines. And then are they good? Do they bring order to it? Do they bring attraction to it? Does it repel people? Who saw it happen? There's, it's really complicated because somebody may have seen you last time and then you end up interacting with them next time. You didn't know that they saw you. We're subconsciously reacting to so much. They may not remember they saw you, but they remember something. I was in meditation thinking of this song. A song was coming to me. As I was relaxing deeper and deeper. I relaxed and the song came to my mind. And I was jamming out to it. My soul was bought banging its head, even though I was motionless. And then I realized like a minute later, one of my housemates was playing that song. Now, was, were they playing it when I heard it? I, don't, I definitely did not consciously hear it. I was not aware. But did at some level, was, was I hearing it but not? Sometimes the toilet downstairs runs. I don't know how these guys tolerate it. I look at AZD and he's lecturing and it's running. And I think he just likes to never complain about anything. So he's never going to tell anybody to do anything about it. He just won't. I know it. 
And then I'm looking at Sultan and Fernando and one of them just used the bathroom. Because when I do it, I do something different. Like I close the door, I jiggle the handle, I try to make it less. It's, just, it's obnoxious. It's like this, it just keeps going for like 15 minutes. I wonder if they even hear it. Are they so buzzing in their own thoughts or are they so invested in the cell phone or do they just not give a fuck so much? And I'm just so super sensitive to like little whistling sounds like that. I don't know, but that's not like the only example of that. That's just a example of sometimes you just don't hear it. You don't know, but you are reacting to it. That hissing sound is agitating you. There's no way it's relaxing you. There's just no way the hissing running toilet is relaxing you unless somehow inside you're translating it to be like a waterfall or something, which I guess could happen. There's probably some mental effort with that too. You have to be delusional to make it work for yourself. So, um, why was I saying that? Uh, what was I saying? Toilet hissing, being used to stuff, all these lecturing won't, won't tell anybody to stop it from running. Uh, hypnosis. Oh, oh, the song. So the song while I was in meditation. So it's like I heard this song and I'm banging my head to it. I'm, I'm fucking partying out to it inside. And then I hear the song for, on the outside. I only heard it on the inside. And it was like, man. I, it, in all likelihood, the song was probably playing and I, on a deep level, heard it, but I did not, I was not aware that I heard it and my body was reacting to the few things that maybe could be heard, like the drum beat or like maybe some of the sounds. And it's a good song I've heard many times before. So maybe there's actually a nervous system pattern in me to resonate with that pattern on the outside. So we're reacting to things without us even knowing. I'm bobbing my head in meditation to this song that I didn't even know was playing. So the person that sees you from the outside socially interact may not remember you the next time they see you, but maybe they do. I'll bet that their mind recorded it and they're just not aware that it's in there, but there's somewhere like an ant's mind in there, an imprint of you. And it's maybe got positive emotion or a negative emotion. And when it matches up with you again, it will recall the positive or the negative emotion associated with you. Just some subtle level. That's mixed in with all their other perceptions going on at the moment. But do you put out good in your social interactions or do you not? We'll come back unless you keep moving on city to city, but eventually you return. And, you know, this game, you're downloading the code, an advanced code from somebody that's gaming all the time and pulling the best strings of code and weaving them all together into this woven tapestry that just more deeply influences the very game that he's practicing playing. And we are messengers of it. And I'm a messenger of it. I'm here telling you, you got to go to the beast camp, the gathering freedom. It's called April 20, uh, 22nd to 24th. There's a party here. There's infield, there's online, all this stuff. And it, you know, it's super affordable. It's just ridiculously low priced. Uh, you can't get this. It's the best player in the world. Like I don't have to be shy about it. I don't have to lie about it either. So it's pretty easy. Actually. I just get to show up and talk about it and say, Hey, it's the best you're missing out. Why do I get to do that? Because I missed out the least when I had the most opportunities to. And, you know, so I'm here in this position. I was one of you in some way at whatever level of closeness you are. And maybe you don't want to be that close. Maybe you're at the exact level you want to be at. I think I was too. And I am now. And that's the evolution of it. Like I was once more distant. And when it came time to be more close, I made it happen. So, uh, downloading that code and we're expressing the code in our lives and it accumulates and it's going to get, you're going to level up. Plus you're maturing and growing as a man. So you're naturally, your value is going up, but you might get worse at game just because you get better at life. Cause there's a, there's a communication with her, her essence, her agenda that is different from all your business doings and all the other activities of life. And if you're not tapping into her then you're tapping into something else, and, you know, cross training can help a little bit. Running can help me a little bit at wrestling, but it's not going to make me a great wrestler. I got to wrestle if I want to like get great at wrestling and then do a little bit of cross training. So I guess that's about it. I kept y'all's attention. Hope it was good. I don't see any hands. I don't see any comments. Somehow y'all stayed. So 
must have been Deese, right? Is Deese? Let's see, maybe there's some social media comments. Sound is going out on Insta. Fuck Instagram. That's why you all should come to Zoom. Mirin says thanks. Thank you, Mirin. Showing up, supporting. All right, TK. Okay, everybody, shout out to TK posting all these episodes. Give us a review on, uh, you know, Apple, Spotify, also Stitcher's big one, and Podcast Addict. Those are like the top four. And, uh, you know, that helps us. And then, of course, the gathering coming up. There's a gathering going on tonight in one hour is the advanced lecture. So tap in with us at imcbase1.com to see details about that. And I'll see you in the next episode. Peace.